Open the package and remove the device from the sterile wrapping. Select the correct size connector and attach it to the chest catheter, ensuring a tight and secure fit. As soon as the chest catheter is connected to the Sinapi chest strain, low pressure suction can be initiated by depressing the bulb. Once the patient reaches the ICU or high care unit, wall suction can be initiated if indicated. When the chest catheter is inserted out of theater, confirm its position as follows. Once the chest catheter is connected to the Sinapi chest strain, depress the bulb. The bulb must initially re-expand, confirming that air or fluid is draining from the pleural space. If it does not re-expand, there is an absence of fluid or air at the catheter tip, and the catheter must be repositioned, or the lung may be re-expanded. Hang the device next to the bed, lower than the patient. Ensure that there are no dependent loops or kinks in the patient drainage tubing where fluid can accumulate. The short tubing of the Sinapi chest strain reduces the probability of this occurrence. During repositioning or transportation of the patient, the device can be placed flat horizontally on the bed next to the patient. It is safe to lift the unit higher than the patient, making nursing care and patient mobility easier. However, when unattended, the device should hang next to the bed. Use a Sinapi chest strain for gravity drainage or active suction. To initiate active suction, set the white suction knob to the required value. Connect the tubing from the vacuum source to the suction port. Slowly increase the wall suction from zero until the red bellows reaches the set value. Do not increase wall suction further as this will increase noise levels. Regularly monitor and record chest drainage volumes. Make use of the writable surface on the rigid container to mark hourly drainage levels. To accurately record small drainage volumes, the device can be turned sideways. Empty the device at the end of each shift or when it reaches the maximum drainage volume. Connect the disposable drainage bag to the tap and open the tap. Disconnect suction from the device or temporarily clamp the suction tubing by hand to allow free drainage. Close the tap. Reconnect suction or reset the suction regulator to the prescribed suction pressure. Disconnect the bag from the device and cap. Immediately discard the bag into a medical waste container. When patients start to mobilize, a shoulder strap is used. Call the drainage tube around the handle to prevent dependent loops in which fluid collects, compromising lung re-expansion. A stand is available in which the device can be placed when the patient sits out in a chair. During gravity drainage, it is good practice to use a suction bulb to generate a suction force. If the bulb continues to reinflate after being depressed, this is indicative of one, a pneumothorax only, or two, a pneumothorax with a persistent air leak. To verify a persistent air leak, fill the air leak chamber by administering 20 milliliters saline through the needle-free sampling port. Look for bubbles. If bubbling is visible, air is evacuating from the chest, indicating a persistent air leak. If bubbling is not visible, air is not evacuating, but a pneumothorax still exists. The pneumothorax is only resolved when the bulb does not re-expand after being manually depressed. Before removing the chest catheter, confirm that the drainage volume is low, the bulb stays depressed over time. There is an absence of pneumo or hemothorax with clinical examination or chest x-ray. Best practice involves replacing the Sinapi chest drain after seven days.